do I still have cancer? I think you can answer this question in a bunch of different ways. A lot of people say that stage four breast cancer is incurable. Hello, I'm Samantha. I'm by myself in this video because I need to address some things and I'm doing this video from my bed again because this is where I live my life. Okay, so first, yes, the channel name is different. It used to just be Samantha Lynn, which is my name, and now it's Samantha and Greg because me and my husband got married. I posted something on YouTube about it, but it was just in the community section and I didn't actually make a video about it, so I will talk about that a little bit later. Probably the number one question that I get nowadays is, do you still have cancer? Mostly this question is from people who aren't closely following my story, but it's also from people who frequently watch our videos. So I thought that I would make this to explain some stuff because it is a little bit confusing. There's not really a clear yes or no answer. I mean, there kind of is a clear yes or no answer, but it really just kind of depends on how you look at it and I mean, even I'm confused by it. <laughs> First of all, I'll just do a really quick recap for the people who are very, very confused, like the people who didn't even know that cancer was a thing with me. In March 2019, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. We later learned that that was stage four breast cancer. If you're interested in any of those details, I have other videos about it. I have like a whole series called My Cancer Story. That was the original purpose of this YouTube channel was for me to document my journey with cancer, to spread awareness because I was super young when I was diagnosed. It's really rare. I also just wanted to show my friends and family what was going on with me because everyone was interested and I wanted to help people who were going through a similar diagnosis. I really shouldn't say my because this channel is called Samantha and Grey now because when my husband and I got married uh, we decided that we wanted to change the name of the channel to Samantha and Grey to just document other fun parts about our life because I kind of wanted to shift the focus of this YouTube channel. The reason for this is because we are married now and I do want to focus on some of the other fun things that are going on in our life and I don't want to just be constantly thinking about cancer even though it really is a big part of our lives and it is still a relevant thing. I just don't want it to be the main thing that we're focusing on because it gets to the point where it's just kind of depressing to always talk about it and it's like kind of going back in a wrong direction for me and so it would just be better for my happiness, our happiness to you know move on from that. I just want to live my life and enjoy it and no matter how long my life's gonna be, I wanna have fun and enjoy the time that I have with my husband. So that's what we're going to be focusing on now. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. The question that everyone wants to know, do I still have cancer? I think you can answer this question in a bunch of different ways. I think you can say yes. I think you can say maybe. I think you can say no. And it all just depends on how you look at it. I probably like to lean towards the maybe to no range, but let me just explain what I'm talking about. Like I said before, my cancer was stage four. With breast cancer, that means that the cancer has spread beyond the breast and the lymph nodes that are kind of close to it, and it has gone somewhere else in the body. A lot of people say that stage four breast cancer is incurable because it has gotten into the bloodstream to move to that other place in the body. So that's why you could maybe argue that the answer is yes, that I still have cancer, but the thing with cancer is that it is completely different depending on the person, so it's all just kind of more complicated than that. My breast cancer was stage four because it moved somewhere else in my body, like I already said, but the place that it moved was just to one rib. It was in this tiny spot on the rib, it was like a centimeter or something, I don't really remember what the exact size was. People actually can remove ribs and people do it all the time, but this rib you actually can't remove. Um, we talked to a lot of doctors about it and none of them were comfortable with doing it just based on where the cancer was and everything. So you can't say that the cancer was completely removed from my body because it wasn't because we didn't take out that rib. What did happen was I did chemotherapy as part of my breast cancer treatment for everything else and that chemo kind of shrunk down that cancer that was on that rib into a smaller area and it was like kind of more contained even than it was before. After we did that and I was doing radiation treatment, we also shot some radiation at that rib. We did like a targeted radiation thing that was like zapping that one specific spot on that rib 
to kind of get rid of the rest of the cancer that was there. After finishing all of my radiation, that spot on my rib doesn't light up on my PET scan anymore. If you don't know what a PET scan is, it's basically like a test where you get injected with this radioactive dye tracer stuff and then you do a CT scan and that tracer will go to areas of your body with high metabolic activity and so those areas will light up on the scan. So maybe you can say that that cancer is gone and maybe you can say that that cancer is still there but not actively growing but really we don't know and there's not really a way to know. We looked at that spot on an MRI but because there was radiation on that rib the rib looks completely different than it did before and it looks completely different than all the other ribs around it so you can't really compare them and see anything. It makes you think because even though there's been tons and tons of advances in medicine we still don't really have an exact way to know if there's cancer in your body. Basically, you could have cancer in your body right now and you would have no way to know um, if it's just like a small amount of it. Because of that, a lot of doctors don't declare somebody cancer free until they have had clear PET scans for five years. And some people say that they're cancer free as soon as they have surgery or as soon as they have chemo or as soon as they have a clear scan. I have never had a medical professional tell me that I'm cancer free. These are just things that I have observed on the internet. So usually what I do when someone asks me if I still have cancer is I just tell them that I'm in remission. Remission is different than cancer free because remission can mean that there's just a reduction in the amount of cancer in your body. You might hear people say complete remission and partial remission and complete remission is just when there's no signs of cancer. So some doctors will say you're cured if you've been in that state for five years. And five years is just a random length of time that people decide to use. I mean, it's not completely random, but it's also just random. A lot of times if cancer does come back, it comes back within five years. But you know, some people say 10 years, some people say you can't really be cured, and some people say you're cured as soon as there's a clear scan. Like I said, it's all just completely different depending on the person. And everybody has a different argument for all these things and everyone has a reason why they're right about all of these things. And I just don't really ever feel like explaining this all the time so that's why I usually just say that I'm in remission because even though a medical professional also has never told me that I'm in remission, it basically has to be true, right? Like even if you don't say that I'm in complete remission, you'd have to at least say that I'm in partial remission because you don't see cancer show up on scans and stuff and like all the other cancer is gone and like I'm not actively doing cancer treatment and stuff. Oh my gosh, that's a whole other thing that we'll get to in a second. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is if I just tell people that I'm in remission, then it stops them from asking questions and they can take it to mean whatever they want it to mean. <laughs> I don't know if that's rude or not, but that's just what I do. And maybe now I can just send them to this video. Hi. Yeah. You're annoying. Do you want to make an appearance? The other thing that's confusing is that people ask me if I am in cancer treatment. That's a whole other thing that has a bunch of other terms that people define differently. I'm taking medication because of cancer, which you could say is cancer treatment, but a lot of people would also say that it's not active cancer treatment. Even then, this is really still confusing. Usually active cancer treatment means something that is actively trying to kill the cancer you have, like chemotherapy and radiation. And that's why finishing radiation was a really big accomplishment for me because it meant that I was done with the big three things that I had to do. I had to do chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation. And by that point, the cancer was like really suffering. I was like, ha, I'm murdering you, take that man. And the cancer was like, ha ha, no, you take that because even though you are killing me right now, I'm not going down without a fight because you're gonna feel absolutely horrible from all these medicines. But I don't get to be done with all the medicines for cancer because my cancer was hormone receptor positive, which means that it likes estrogen. And I make estrogen naturally, 
so I need to take medicines that stop me from making that so that my body doesn't give the cancer that I had more things to use to grow because I don't want it to grow. Basically, I am on a pill that I take every single day that reduces my estrogen and then I also get a shot every 28 days that helps shut down my ovaries because my ovaries came back full force even after chemotherapy tried to ruin them. They came back and since I'm young, that happens a lot, so they need to give me the shot every 28 days. It like suppresses everything and makes it so that you know, these medicines actually work. I'm also on this wonderful drug called Rebocyclib and it's technically not chemotherapy because it works in a different way than chemotherapy. It's called targeted therapy instead of chemotherapy, even though it has a lot of the same side effects as chemotherapy, um, just a little bit more mild, like, cause I was on really intense chemotherapy before, so this isn't as bad as that. But like chemotherapy works by like actively killing cancer cells and this drug um, can prevent the cancer cells from growing by depriving them of things that it needs. But it's not like doing the same thing as chemotherapy so technically it's not chemotherapy even though I got a special card from my oncologist that was like what to do when you're taking oral chemo meds and like all the things you can and can't do and like I can't eat grapefruit. I have another video about medication that I take in a day. That's like a year old now, but you can watch that if you're interested. But anyway, this targeted therapy, I don't know if you consider that active cancer treatment because it's not chemotherapy, but it's a targeted therapy. So like, is that a gray area? I don't know. So people obviously define that differently. I am not a doctor. I just wanna throw that out there. I know you can probably tell that because I don't have very technical explanations for things, but I just know things based on what people tell me and what I know from, you know, years of having cancer. <laughs> I probably don't consider this active treatment because it's not as intense as before and like I don't really have, like, it's just a different vibe. <laughs> Like before, it was like, this cancer is gonna kill you if you don't do anything. You really need to do this stuff and you need to murder it right now. And this is just kind of like, you need to do this for a long time so the cancer doesn't come back. And it's just like, it's a different vibe now. It still sucks, but it's just, it's different. <laughs> anyway, whatever way you look at it, I'm taking all this medication as a result of having cancer. I usually say that I'm still a cancer patient just because I am actually going to the cancer center monthly and whether or not you agree that I have cancer right now, I still did at one point and I'm still suffering from the consequences you could say of having cancer. But some people might say that I'm not a cancer patient because I'm not currently in active treatment. However you define that. So usually when I answer these questions, I answer them, yes, I am a cancer patient. No, I am not in active treatment but I am on hormone therapy medication and a targeted therapy medication, and I am in remission. My oncologist wants me to be on these medications for five to 10 years, which seems like forever to me because of all the side effects of these medications. Basically, I feel nauseous like every single night when I take these and sometimes last throughout the day. Some days are worse than others. Basically, I have three weeks on this medicine, one week off, so I feel really bad for three weeks, and then I get a week of break to like recover and let my body recover and gain some of its white blood cells back. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I'm technically immunocompromised, which was a really fun thing at the start of this pandemic when we didn't know what was going on with COVID and all that. Anyway, since I'm going to be on these medications for a long time, I'm still going to be feeling not that great for a long time. So it's not going away. It's still going to be part of our videos. It's just not going to be the biggest part of our videos. That being said, I still think that I wanna make some videos about cancer just because I feel like I do have a lot of knowledge about having cancer because I did. I still wanna help those people, you know, that are Googling things late at night about like, what's chemo gonna do to me? I just wanna see this explained by a person and see someone else that went through the same thing. So there's still gonna be videos about that, it's just not going to be the main focus. <coughs> 
Okay, I think I've explained this enough and now that you have all the information you can use your own logic or googling skills or whatever to decide for yourself if I have cancer or not. At this point, if you're still watching this video, you should give it a like because you're still here and so you obviously liked it at least a little bit and it really helps support us. If you liked this video and you want to see more, then you should go check out some of the other videos on our channel and you sub subscribe. Subscribe. Sub subscribe. Yeah, that's all. Bye. <laughs>